Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at a host of products and when you're looking at these products keep in mind I'm going to be asking for suggestions. I'm looking for another build. Uh, my Hornet build, which is a Vista build, will be coming to the channel pretty soon. I think I have the tune worked out to my satisfaction. Uh, I've also got two toothpicks that will be coming to the channel relatively soon. They're kind of differently built but yet on the same frame. And of course I've been flying the new Diatone toothpick around too, so those things will be coming to the channel. I don't have any builds I'm currently working on. You guys know that I take forever on builds, so I would like to use some of the, at least these components that you'll see in this video. So if you have a build four inch or less, I would prefer a three inch, but four inch or less, uh, let's uh, look to build something out of the components that we have. We have a lot here. Obviously, we've been staring at the Z's 2020 stack, which is a very robust and thick stack. Look at the ESC. I mean, when I pulled these out of the package, my first thought was, whoa, that's robust. It is 20 by 20. Uses uh, M2 or M3. M2 or M3. M3. Yeah, M3 screws. So much different than we're probably used to seeing on this channel with micro builds. Something to keep in mind if we're going to use this stack. Uh, we've got our current sensor and all our fits. Very large pads. Obviously, this is more of a small mounting for a larger quad. We have huge pads for our battery leads, and it comes with an XT60 as well. Of course, I wouldn't use that in my build, and let's see what gauge it is. 14 gauge wire, if you can see that right there. So this stack has everything you want. Six UARTs. I believe I saw on their website. It can also accept 8S input as far as the flight controller goes. Uh, it does have onboard flash, so for black box, uh, you can record that and use that to your tuning benefit. It's got a 3 amp 5 volt back, so all sorts of stuff can run right from the flight controller, and you shouldn't be browning that stuff out. That's something that you have to consider when you're doing builds. And the uh, ESC itself, oh, I didn't show you the underside, so it's interesting. To me, the underside looks more glossy. Maybe, I wonder if this has been conformal coated? I don't think so, because those pads don't look like there's anything on those. But something I should um, mention, you can see right there that we've got solder pads, but it's also got a wiring harness to where you can just go between the two boards if you wanted to. If for some reason you don't like wiring harness, or you're going to separate it out to where maybe you have a, a flat stack where you're going to put an air unit, a DJI Vista or something in it, you can do that as well. Uh, you do have a little bit of a wiring kit in here and two capacitors, by the way. It does come to you with the uh, soft mounting already stuck inside uh, the mounting holes. Back to the ESC, uh, three to six S input, 45 amp, uh, peak of 55 amps. So holy smokes, you could really draw some amps, some big six S batteries out of this little guy. Uh, I've got two of these. If we choose to build them, great. I'm leaving one in the box. So when I get back to doing giveaways, if we don't end up using this, then I'll give one away for someone else's benefit. Uh, USB-C on the flight controller. That's something else to also note is USB-C if you don't have too many of those cables around. A lot of new cell phones are going to those. Most of the cell phones I have around my house are either iPhones or they're all the old micro USB. And we also have connectors on the corners for all the different accessories that we might need to use. And over here we have our OSD chip down yeah i've got it right side up hopefully you can read that let me zoom in so we've got some nice and clear screen printing on the bottom here of what all these pads are for what you can use them for so it should make building if you don't want to use connectors pretty simple designed in italy see that right up there at the top designed in italy z's am i saying that right z's f7 2020 pretty heavy beefy stack i can't imagine burning that thing out anytime soon unless you're just going 6s into a cement wall oh and i should have mentioned uh it also comes with some pretty ha fancy hardware here we've of course got pins we've got an extra connector in there see those are extra connectors uh the pins you probably wouldn't use we've got extra soft mounting and then we've got these red spacers that yeah you may like it adds a little flair and of course we have our standard connector here the black wire with the red single wire right there that goes between your stack if you choose to use it also have this toolkit m6 uh, we've seen these a few times uh, so you've got your input here your output there uh, then we've got our balance lead that we put in there we can also charge our cell phone here and then we've got a touch screen well actually you just touch it over here this is our input let's plug it in take a look at it oh before i get there it's also got feet on the back which i think if you're out in the field that might be important depending upon the surface that you're setting it on to where that fan can get some air into it so if it's sitting 
Well, if it's sitting on a blanket, you're probably hosed. You're probably going to want to get this up off a blanket. But if you're sitting in a lawn chair or something like that, these feet may help it get some air and circulation. Nice little tone there. This is the first time I've powered it on. Let me see if I've got an adapter so I can plug in a battery to charge, to play with. Okay, found a little adapter. Got a cotter battery. I'll have a video on these shortly. They're premium batteries. I am finding that on average I get slightly more flight time. That's not definitive, of course, because, well, there's a lot of variables in that. So we got our battery all connected here. Tells us our, our rates and what we're going to do as far as charging 2 amp, cells, auto, voltage, 420. You can add a new profile, it looks like. We're going to go down here and select charge. We're going to hit the OK. Oops, forget. So there's our charge screen. Fast charging completed. I thought that was a dead battery. Well, I guess that kind of works out. In our settings. 200 watts, safe temperature, safe time. Discharge mode, idle beep. Backlight 10, buzzer 4. Can change those up and down, I presume. Oh, that's kind of just a pitch. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it's got different themes. Oh, just light and dark. I prefer dark, so let's move on to that. Language, English, default, okay. So, nothing really uh, interesting there, except for the... Press OK to start measuring the battery voltage internal resistance. Let's see what this comes up with. Oh, I can feel the fan turning on. I wonder how long this is going to take. Hello? Press OK to start measuring battery. Okay. Press OK to start measuring battery voltage and internal resistance. So I hit OK. I'm not getting any readings. Hmm. Okay, so it balances. Am I doing something wrong? Well, we're going to skip it. We're going to spend too much time on this as it is. <laughs> Let's look, take a look at... Oops. Take a look at output. Press OK to start power supply. Don't short circuit. PWM. I suppose that's essentially the same stuff as we had on the measure. So that's... Uh, oddly enough, I wonder... I'm a little bit bothered by this. I keep going back to it. And I'm expecting to see readings over here on the cells. Am I not waiting long enough? If I jump down to where it says balance, it'll do that. Uh, battery chargers, I get those readings fairly quickly. So I'm a little bit concerned that that's not working or I'm not doing something right. It's 150 watt, 1 to 6S. So if you were to take some of uh, Bob's XT30 based 1S, or if you've converted your own out to the field, you could use a little guy like this to do your charging. Maybe even a parallel board or something like that. Uh, we've got a parallel board that I showed you recently the from Flying Sandal on Race Day Quads so that you could charge, I think it's four at a time. I think he's got a six at a time version now. Well, I'm not getting anything here, so I'm going to skip it. I don't know what's going on. So we're going to unplug this and move on. I'm confused by this. And the M6 does come with a USB cable, if you're curious. Okay, so we got some new RCN power motors. Uh, actually, two sets of each of these came in. So uh, just off screen above us, we have seven more of these motors and seven more of these motors. Uh, same styles and KVs. This one's pretty interesting. We'll get to that one second. Uh, this is a 1404, 6000 KV. So I presume 3S on something like this. Uh, you might be able to run 4S on it. I don't even see these motors listed on their website yet. Uh, so I don't have any specs as far as uh, any measurements they may have done. And I think you call that smooks. Let me zoom in. I guess you can see it on the box back there too. Smooks? Smoogs? I don't know how you say it. It's kind of a cool print on here. And they call this orange and uh, gunmetal. As you can see there on the box. Uh, you probably can't see there because it's blurry. But this is orange and gunmetal. Pretty attractive motor. 
those air gaps. It's not a notchy motor. Uh, this is a 9x9 mounting, so it has the same mounting pattern you would see for uh, 12x size motors or 110x. Uh, those motors with the four hole mounting pattern so you need to make sure if you're looking at these motors that you do get that in particular uh, we'll weigh it up here in just a second after we take another look let me uh, we've got some fairly lengthy wires looks to be let's get my calipers out we can measure them real quick looks to be right around 150 millimeters of wire length so you could do all sorts of different installations they're both the same i was checking them at the same time uh, earlier and i found them to be the same size now this motor here is a 1507. I kind of thought that was a five right out of the box. 1507, 3800 kV. And you'll notice this stem. Now that's unusual and you're probably thinking, how am I gonna use that? What prop am I gonna put on that thing? Also note the mounting pattern on the bottom is 12 by 12. So just for visual comparison, nine by nine on the right, 12 by 12 on the left. So you need to make sure you have the appropriate size of screw holes in your quad frame in order to use these motors. And of course, keep these in mind when we're talking about things to build. Uh, these motors also have a prop drilling kit. Let me show you that, it's pretty cool. Comes in this little like medical tube thing. They have a video on their website on how to use this, or at least I think they did. Um, they have maybe posted it to their YouTube channel as I have parts just kind of going everywhere. I'm sure their method or their way of showing it is going to be much more informative than mine, but I wanted to give it a try. So I've got uh, a prop here, and my understanding is I need to put this through here, put the prop on there, kind of shoves down pretty tight. So this, this piece here is simulating our shaft, our prop shaft that is. Put a screw in here. Get that started. Let me grab my screwdriver. Where is my 1.5? There we go. Get that going down in there a little bit. Is it not? There we go. Grab my other screw. So this is a little kit to help us drill out props to make pretty much any prop it's the T-style prop, you know, it's got the screws in it, available to use on this, because they do have a different shaft size here. So then you pull this out, and this little piece here I'm touching with my thumb and index finger. And we take our drill bit, put that in. Hopefully I don't bump the camera here too much. Oh, my hands are getting slick. I've got my little handy gripper out here. Maybe get full, take some of that out. Maybe this is taking too long and I've lost you all. Let me do it this way. Being as I am right handed. I may have gotten it all. It doesn't go all the way through, of course, because we, we can't. Give it a few more turns here at the end. See what I get. Okay, I think that's all the way out. Okay, so we got our prop loose now. We will probably have to ream out the very end once I can get this threaded all the way out of the prop. Long-winded screws. Where'd my, there it goes. Oh, it was all the way through. Okay, so just clean it up a touch. And you'll see on the bottom side of this, see how it's got that divot so that we can go all the way through the prop, but yet we don't need some, some other sort of piece where we come actually through because then you would be going into the screw heads. So yeah, now we can take this nut put it on this whoops wrong hole and they have another little wrench for us uh, this piece right here goes on the top it's a pretty snazzy little kit pretty cool I was pretty impressed with this kit you know for the longest time when we drilled out props we had 
so, you know, little little bits like this that maybe had a round disc on them. So when you were drilling them out, you pretty much were just hoping that you got things straight. This thing kind of eliminates the hope and actually makes sure because the prop is mounted down and the drill bit can only move so much, which is very, very little, it seems to me, in order to drill out your props, in order to be able to use the T-style props on this. Also note the little nubbins on here so it locks onto the base. Hopefully you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit more. See these little, I'm calling them nubbins right here. See, oh, there's a good shot of it. So your prop would sit down over those, so it would really take a hold of it. Uh, something else you don't have to worry about is the motor losing grip of the prop. So that's pretty cool. I was fairly impressed with that. So what should we buy and uh, build these things up? You know, I've got two sets of each, so I'm looking at two different frames, something for the 1404 6000 KV. We're also looking at the uh, 1507. 3800 kV, so probably running 4S on those, probably 3S on the 1404s. If we can use these Z design boards, that is great. I'm way zoomed in there. Holy catfish. If we can use these, that would be great. Of course, it wouldn't be the lightest, most high performance build, but depending upon what you guys kind of want to see, please scan through what everybody is suggesting uh, before you leave your own suggestion. But I can also just uh, search things up and see where. Uh, the, the most popular choices fall. I'm sure you have lots of good ideas of what you would like to see. Also, uh, we got 1204 5000 KV in the pink and blue. I have already used these motors. Where did that build go? On the Armitan Tadpole, the 2.5 inch edition. And I'm running those with the HQ props. And this was uh, featured in a video not that long ago where we put the Foxier Lollipop. Some people noted that the Foxier Lollipop was the worst of those. In this particular case, <laughs> whether that is the worst of the antennas on the market or not, uh, that combination of the little rubber piece down there and that Lollipop took uh, care of the video issue I was having with this particular quad. So it got me to where I would fly this quad a lot more regularly. But we've used those RCN Power 1204 5000 kV motors. If there's something else you would like for me to build with those motors, uh, let me know. We are getting to that time of the season where things are seemingly slowing down a little bit. I do. I already showed you what I have to work on, and I've got a couple other little odds and ends and some things that may or may not come to the channel anytime soon. You know, they're kind of behind the scenes things, but I've already shown you the things you should expect to see videos on uh, coming up, and I'm sure excited to use these motors. Oh, I wanted to weigh them. Almost forgot. Let me pick up, and then we'll weigh them. Uh, one more thing. I'm going to Steve Jobs you here a little bit. I wanted to show you how the motor shipped. I was fairly impressed with this little way. I know it's a simple thing. Just the nerd in me is like, Whoop. I don't know. I like that. So let's weigh them. Okay, this is the 1404, 6,000kV. Touch over 10 grams. This is the 1507, 3,800kV. 18.4 grams. And I found... Okay, this motor is an old uh, King Kong or LDRC. I actually kind of like these motors. Actually, I really liked these motors back in the day. Obviously, I haven't used them in a long time. But these are uh, 1408s, 3750 kV. So you might be able to compare them with the weights of these. Of course, it doesn't have nearly as long of wire. Ooh, seven, little, almost 17 and a quarter. Let me go back to this one. 17 and a quarter. So this is about a gram and a quarter heavier. No, oh, and this one's like five or six grams. Yeah, touch over 17, only 10. So almost seven grams difference between these two. Of course, again, 1408, much taller stator, and it's got a uh, M3 shaft on it versus this one is T-style, so it just has that uh, small two millimeter shaft in it. So as we wrap up here, uh, what do you want to see me build? We've got a couple of different options here that we can use these components. I've got some build money I've squirreled away so that we can go out and buy more flight controllers, uh, ESCs, whatever we need to do to do a build that you guys want to. Uh, please, again, go through the comments. See if you can uh, thumbs up someone else's suggestion for a frame to build up. I'm excited to use these motors. They're not even listed on the website. I think they're very, very new. Uh, check out RCN Power. Check out Z's Designs in Italy. Uh, check out Hobby Porter. I think they sent me some of these items. Uh, did I mention that that prop drilling kit, I believe it comes with these motors. So if you order a set of motors, you get the, trop, the prop drilling kit. Uh, but 
if you find the motors, make sure it says something about this. I'm not certain of that because I can't find them on their website. So uh, I'm a little bit uncertain. Maybe RCM Power will come along and affirm that. I do believe I asked them if this comes with the motors and I think the response was yes. So hopefully if you buy the 1507s, you get this little smart prop drilling kit. Let me know what you think. What do you think of the colors? What do you think the size? Why didn't this give me any resistance? Do I need to wait? Do any of you have the M6 and you have to wait like a minute? Maybe I didn't wait long enough to get the resistance value. Otherwise, it seems to work fine. It's not something I would use just because I fly from home. You guys know I just pop out back. It's very, very rare I go and leave the house and do much flying. Usually if I do, I've got all my batteries charged up with me and it's just kind of a one-time thing. Okay, let me know what you think. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.